like to speak about uh, uh, education and uh, community involvement. Uh, could you please share with us uh, some of your thoughts about the importance of education and community involvement in uh, projects of wireless innovation? Yeah, I mean, in addition to being part of the Butterfly Effect, which is a coalition of non-governmental civil society organizations, also part of the Fund Freshwater Action Network Mexico. Uh, there's a group of NGOs that work in, in basically to support the delivery of water and sanitation services to uh, uh, communities that are disadvantaged in one way or another. And one of the things I think all of us is clear is that uh, when you talk about the delivery of services, it's, it's not coming and saying, this is what you need. But it really is being able to have respect for the people there and, and know that they, if they have the right support, they can figure out pretty much what's best for them. Um, and so th this is kind of critical in terms of water and sanitation, but it's critical also in terms of developing sustainable communities. That uh, water and sanitation can't be managed in isolation of other needs. So that if you have identified with the community that water is a priority, mm -hmm. or in some cases sanitation can be a good priority if they are suffering from major problems in terms of contamination, uh, then they can say, oh, you know, this is a problem. But generally people don't see sanitation as much of a problem as water. But if you enter them at the level where they have a, a need, mm -hmm. then you can link that to other uh, other areas, but if the linkage happen naturally if you do it in a way that they're developing their own skills, mm -hmm. and uh, which might be skills in communication or skills in working in a group mm -hmm. um, of, of of learning how to negotiate their position. Mm -hmm. Or uh, the other part that I made a phrase in one of the messages that we developed that said. Uh, something about financial, institutional, and I put psychological resources. And somebody said, "What's a psychological resource? You know, is it is it a psychiatrist?" And I said, "No, the psychological resources is it feeling that you are worth something, mm -hmm. and that what you uh, uh, what you do is important. And and this is this is critical in terms of development." Because if everything comes from the outside, uh, you might immediately seem like you're helping people, but you put them into a passive role. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm answering too much too fast, like you know. But if you if you put them in a passive role and you end up doing, which you know very well in Spanish is paternalismo. There, you know, if if there if your approach is paternalistic, mm -hmm. then just by definition, paternalistic is the, the padre, mm -hmm. uh, it's the parent. So it puts them in a position where they're the children. So if your relationship to communities is as children, they will relate as children. So they will either be dependent, submissive, or they will at a certain point maybe be rebellious, which may be better. But they will always be in this subservient relationship. So you need to work with communities in a way that they really, uh, it's horizontal, mm -hmm. that they are really what matters. And this means also in dealing with people, there's a moral reply. Yes. Yeah. Does it come to the point where you uh, talk about the change in behavior, but not just behavior in sanitation, but uh, that's right. That's right. It's like people that if they have, if they have made the decision, this is what I want. Uh, I don't think it's so much the question of subsidies. It's a question of letting people decide and then supporting them as you can to get that. But then it's theirs. And when you really feel, it's like. Uh, I, this was going through my mind the other day because I have a real problem with uh, community-led total sanitation, which is an approach to get communities to take a decision, but they've also drawn a line and said no subsidies. Okay, so these are, you're dealing with poor people, 
you know, community-led soil sanitation works best in communities where 80% of the people are defecating in the open. Mm -hmm. So obviously there are people, not only they have this habit, but there are people who are poor. And there are often people who their own level of self-esteem is very low. Uh, so uh, then you say you can't subsidize it. So they make a decision, we want sanitation, but what kind of sanitation can they afford? So they dig a hole, or they put a cheap latrine, and uh, uh, But when you think about the water and sanitation systems that are here, you know, you go and kind of have a nice toilet, you flush and everything is clean, and it's your, somebody's being paid to take care of the toilet. And you've got these sewage systems that are highly subsidized. And ah, yeah, it's okay for the rich to have a subsidy, right? But the poor, we can't subsidize. It. But it, as if that's the reason that they're not sustainable. But if the poor are deciding what they want, some sort of help in subsidy is not necessarily bad. And we've proved it in our projects. The project we have in San Juan in, in Teposlan, we've got integrated to toilet, dry toilet systems with gray water that have been functioning there for eight years. And you go back and people go, wow. Because the communities, they put mirrors, they fix the steps there, you go into it, and this is their bathroom, it's not a luxury. Because they've identified it, it's theirs, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of the, the, what I was thinking about getting all around is when, um, I don't know, you have your parents ever allow, allow you to have a car or they've helped you with a car, yes. right? Yeah? <laughs> okay. That's a subsidy. Mm -hmm. Does it mean you don't take care of the car? It doesn't have a value to you? <laughs> no. You know, maybe if they say that you have to pay something with for the you have to take care of the repairs, then you know you'll take better care of it. But the fact that you were given the car or loaned the car is not the issue. It's the fact that you needed the car, wanted the car, and you've negotiated a position where you know this is this is the whole issue in terms of subsidies that um, that I think is important in terms of communities. Is, is working with them in terms of what they have and what you have. Great. Thank you very much. Great. Great. Great.